Introduction to reading shop drawings. Gary A. Pace, um, train-eng.com. If you're looking for a low-cost CWI exam that's online, we have both parts A and part B. Check it out, train-eng.com. All right, before we dive into this too heavily, a lot of what I pilfered off the internet and have found is from a U.S. Navy document. Now they've got ships, airplanes, all kinds of goodies. So they put out a lot of prints and they want people to sh know how to read blueprints. So if you go online and you type in NAVEDTRA 14040A Blueprint Reading and Sketching, it'll take you to this course. It's an online, it's a Navy correspondence course, but it goes through how to read blueprints. You can, you know, take as much or as little as you want. Okay, blueprints, drawings. Um, prints and construction drawings contain information blocks which can contain information such as finish marks, notes, specification, legends, and symbols you may find on a blueprint, and which are, we're going to discuss in these following slides. So you need to understand the, the different parts of a blueprint, you know, revision blocks, title blocks, all the different information that's on there. We're going to cover all that before in another episode we get into the lines and some of the information that goes with trying to figure out the alphabet of lines. And I'll explain that after a bit. Information blocks. The draftsman uses information blocks to give the reader additional information about the materials, specifications, and so forth that are not shown in the blueprint or that may need additional explanation. The draftsman may leave some blocks blank if the information in that block is not needed. So we're going to look at some of these blocks. But the draftsman, a lot of times, they can't convey graphically they can't draw a picture and tell you okay we need to use this kind of steel or we need to use this size of bolt so sometimes information is put into information blocks plus um, all the information for who did the drawing and all that kind of stuff is in the information blocks and here's an example of an information block here's a example of a simple drawing you can see down in the right hand corner we've got a title block and it just says title block one and this is just a simple you know three view, three view drawing we've got a top view front view side view it's just a block that's all it is but you can see we've got the title block so you'd have the name of the person that did it and the date in which they did the drawing Here's another example of a title block. I pulled it out of an old version of that um, Navy How to um, Read Blueprints um, course. You know, this is, you can see there's all kinds of information on here. And if you know how to read it and where, where to get the information, you know, you can, you, 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 there's a lot of power in this block. You know, it tells us what it is, the title of it, aircraft carrier, double bottom, aft frame, 180, compartment and access. It tells us the type of drawing, who's authorized it, um, you know, just a whole host of information. We got revisions and whatnot on here, scales. But we'll move on to the next slide and hopefully get a little more detailed. Okay, the title block is located in the lower right hand corner of all blueprints and drawings. And this is for military. It contains the drawing number, name of the part or assembly that it represents and all the information required to identify the part or assembly. It also includes the name and address of the who did it. You know, if I'm an engineer in any drawings that I do, I'm going to put the my name and address and how to track me down in that drawing. So you just don't throw drawings out there without having who prepared the drawing on the drawing. So in the title block you've got all that information it's just it's like the driver's license or an ID card or a um, passport for that drawing it tells you who did that drawing and all the pertinent information about that drawing 
Then we've got a revision block. If you've ever been around construction and manufacturing, very rarely does anything stay the same for a the, the first drawing that you put out there on the floor does not stay the best drawing. Somebody's going to find a flaw in it or you're going to have to revise it or make a change or there was something that needed to be tweaked a little bit. So it's a revision block. So if the designer has to make a change to the print, this is called a revision. If a revision has been made to the drawing, the revision block will be on the print, usually near the title block. All revisions in this block are identified by a letter. A lot of places use numbers. It depends on what your rule book is for um, drawings. A revised drawing is shown by the addition of a letter or a number to the original number. When the print is revised, the letter A in the revision block is replaced by a revision B and so forth. Or it could be Rev 1, Rev 2, Rev 3, Rev 4. So if you're a person that's working with drawings, out in the field you got to need to you need to know that you're working to the most current revision the revision block is probably one of the most important blocks on any drawing because if you're working if you're out there building a building and you're working off of rev a and you should be working off of rev g well there's a lot of changes that have gone through that 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 print has gone through maybe they moved columns erased rooms dug a big pit um, in the middle of a room who knows but there's a revision there and that you need to be cognizant of so that's why we have revision blocks to be able to communicate what has been changed on a drawing so this is what a revision block I circled it in red here and if every time you revise it you rev you put the revision number and then you rev you give a description of what changed okay we changed this this is what has changed in this drawing. Okay, we removed the the jet engines and put in a you know a quantum drive to make this thing go light speed or whatever. Or we took a you know this weld instead of making it a three quarters inch weld, we that was a little excessive. We took it down to a five eighths inch fillet weld. Whatever your description is is going to be listed there, so then you can understand what has changed oh this has changed from this drawing to this drawing you don't have to look around for it because a lot of these drawings will get pretty busy there's a lot of drawings or that have a lot of activity going on them lines and you know a lot of information being conveyed maybe it was just something little that got changed you don't want to spend hours digging around trying to find that the drawing number each blueprint has a drawing number which appears in a block in the lower right hand corner of the title block. The drawing number can be shown in other places, for example, near the top border line in the upper corner or in the reverse side of the other side so it won't be visible when the draw or it'll be visible when the drawings roll. Drawing number is just basically a social security number or an identification number for a drawing. It's the name of the drawing, who it is. Okay, I'm this so that it, it's not going to get confused with somebody else or like a driver's license number. It's a unique numerical identifier for that drawing so that you can keep track of stuff. So here's where a drawing number would be right down there in the corner you know and it, whatever or different organizations have different drawing numbering systems but it's going to tell you what what it is so then if you have to go track it down um, usually in today's age everything's on a computer so if you need to find something you can go track it down all drawings should have I don't say all but most drawings have a grid system it's like playing that old kids game battleship so they got a grid system that's a b c d on you know the up and down on the vertical axis and then on the horizontal axis it'll usually be numbers one two three four five six whatever and this is a uh, this allows you to find something on a drawing it allows you to find something if if we're talking over the phone and I'm like yeah look at the drawing and there's a place where there's a column and this that blah 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 well I, I 
I can just say, all right, look at B3 on that drawing. Shouldn't there be a fillet weld there, or does that not need a fillet weld? It, it allows you to communicate with each other if you're um, trying to figure something out in regards to a drawing. If I'm, if I'm sending an email to the person that made the drawing and I'm like, hey, look at um, B3, this column there, there's a quarter inch fillet weld. I need a, shouldn't it be all the other columns have a inch and a quarter um, fillet weld? Is this too small or is this exactly what you want? It just allows you to find things and be able to reference them in communicating about a drawing with somebody. Grid system numbers serve the same purpose as the numbers and letters printed on borders of maps to help you locate particular point or part. To find a point or a part, you should mentally draw horizontal and vertical lines from these letters and numerals. These lines will intersect at the point or part you are looking for. You will use practically the same system to help you locate parts, sections, and views on large blueprinted objects, for example, assembly drawings of aircraft. Parts numbered in the title block are found by looking up the numbers in the squares along the lower border. So sometimes they'll um, call out and say, yeah, this, this part is going to be in this area. So they're, like they're saying, this is a military book, but they're saying for aircraft. But if you're like on a really large, um, like civil drawings, a lot of times will get really crazy and really busy or large buildings. So y you might need to look some stuff up and be able to communicate with people. So that's why they put in grid systems. So here's an example of a grid system. Um, you can see that I've got, oh, what do we got? A, so at B, um, six, five and a half, you'd have this circle, this hole. If I needed to move something, all right, I need to move that, um, move that hole, you know, two inches up I could communicate with the um, the designer and say hey look at you know this hole that's at you know B five and a half that you know let's let's can we move that thing up or can we make that hole larger or whatever that's why we have grids grid systems and grid numbers to help communicate with people okay now we're gonna talk to bill of materials this is another really important um, block on drawings this is the this is the recipe card this tells you how many chocolate chips how much flour how much butter how much vanilla goes into your batch of chocolate chip cookies the bill of material block contains a list of parts or materials needed for the project the block identifies the parts and materials by stock numbers or other appropriate numbers or descriptions and lists the quantities requited the bill of materials often contains a list of standard parts known as a parts list or schedule. And once again, this is from a military book, so civilian world might run a little different, which I know it does. Um, parts list. Here's a parts list or a bill of materials. This is what they look like, uh, and they're on a drawing. It's just a list of the materials that are used to build the item. So I need three of these, two of these, 47 pounds of chocolate chips, whatever. All right, summary. We covered information blocks, title blocks, revision blocks, drawing numbers, grid systems, and bill of materials. I didn't want to get too crazy. I'll probably break this up into multiple parts, so we'll do another little segment here later. But that's what we covered in this one. Anyways, have a nice day. Take care. GP out.